Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Me and Brock Frady had an amazing one in a lifetime experience. We got a chance to look at and film an original Shelby Cobra, an original aluminum body Shelby Cobra. Now we've both seen a lot of reproductions and the reproductions are amazing, but the original one just was awesome. Especially if you'll notice in the in the scenes here, under the hood, in the trunk, un, in the fender wells, in the hood, uh, in the grill area, you'll see exposed aluminum panels. That is a telltale sign that it's an original one. Now you'll see in the fiberglass reproductions, there's no aluminum uh, exposed under the hood. You know all those places so this was really exciting to me to see all this uh, aluminum exposed because it's something you just cannot see every day so pay close attention to the the uh, the unpainted aluminum we also have close-up shots of the VIN number and Brock's gonna explain the history of Cobra and the actual history of this particular car and where it's been so it's an amazing video thank you for watching and check it out. Regular car guys like you and me would have a blast if we got a chance to throw a race car into a few turns and a few straightaways. We'd love to run through the gears and tell all our buddies about it. Carol Shelby was not that much different than us. Carol was just as enthralled as me and you by the roar of the V8 and the push of G-forces as man meets machine meets road. But that's pretty much where the similarities between you and me and Mr. Shelby end. Carroll Shelby had such a passion for speed and winning that he was not only moved to win at racing, he wanted making his own car by bringing together an unlikely combination of European design and American muscle to create a dominant racing machine and the most replicated car of all time, the AC Cobra. Carroll Shelby had a vision to race and to win and to dominate when there were no sponsors when there weren't millions on the line. It is from this raw passion to build, to race, and to win that I give to you an original 1967 427 cubic inch V8 AC Cobra. This is not a replica. In the fall of 1961, Carol Shelby contacted AC Cars an English car maker to begin a relationship that would produce the most influential American car in terms of track prowess and design replication. Shelby wanted a car that could hold its own against European competition and the AC Ace modified to receive an American V8 power plant instead of the dated Bristol Street 6 seemed to be the solution. AC Cars agreed to modify the Ace for the V8 if a suitable engine could be found. Shelby approached Chevrolet about the project, but they had already committed to fitting their racing power plant into the Corvette and didn't think it would make sense to supply the competition with their engines. Ford had a much different reaction when approached by Shelby about the Euro-American race project. Ford wanted a car that would compete against the Corvette and thus supplied Carroll Shelby with their all-new 260 cubic inch 4.2 liter Hypo V8. This high-performance V8 was lightweight and ready for the track. After testing and modification in England, chassis number CSX2000, model Mark I, was the first AC Cobra shipped by air to Dean Moon's shop in Los Angeles, where Shelby's team began road testing. 
production of the new Cobra race car required several modifications, including upfitting a 289 cubic inch 4.7 liter V8 with a stronger rear differential to handle the increased power, inboard disc brakes, and moving the steering box to make room for the hefty American V8. This faster, lighter, and more balanced Cobra, dubbed the Mark II, went into production in 1963. The Mark II reigned supreme in the US RCC domestic racing series, only losing one race in three years. Production of the Mark II lasted from 1963 until the summer of 1965, with 528 models completed that year alone. The Mark III, like the one you see here, was manufactured from 1965 to 1967 and was available in a 427 cubic inch 7 liter V8 or a 289 cubic inch 7.4 liter V8. The Mark III also saw several improvements from the Mark II model including 4 inch chassis tubes rather than 3 inch. This increased the car's overall structural rigidity. The dated leaf spring suspension was replaced with a sturdier, more responsive coil spring system. The fenders were widened and the radiator opening was increased to help with cooling. Other notable changes came by way of increased dimensions in the body. The length increased by 4.5 inches, the width increased by 7 inches, and the curb weight increased by 40 pounds from 2,315 pounds to 2,355 pounds. The only decrease was vehicle height. The Mark III stood one inch shorter than the Mark II at 48 inches rather than 49 inches. The chassis numbering for AC Cobras destined for the U.S. began with the three-letter designation of CSX. C for the model designation, the S for Shelby, and X for export. This was followed by a four-digit number that started at 2000 and ran sequentially. The model number of the Cobra we see here is CSX 3302. The three in series 3000 models indicated coil spring sus suspension and 2000 models all had leaf spring suspensions. Now let's cover some important highlights and specs of the Cobra we see here. As I said before, this is model CSX 3302 Shelby Cobra. It has a 427 cubic inch displacement engine, four speed manual transmission. CSX 3302 was the first car in what was originally intended to be the third batch of 100 coil spring cars sent to Shelby American. Originally built to Shelby American in blue acrylic paint with black interior on August 4, 24, 1966. CSX 3301 was retained in England making this CSX 3302 the first chassis to receive the 427 engine under Shelby American Chief Engineer Fred Goodell. In June of 1967, Shelby American invoiced CSX 3302 to Larson Ford Incorporated, White Plains, New York, at a cost of $6,595. 3302 was sent by air freight to JFK Airport, where Larson sold the Cobra to Manhattan Avis Rent-A-Car franchisee F. Silvestri. Just a few weeks after delivery, the original carburetor was replaced under warranty. At some point during its tenure with Silvestri, the fiberglass bodywork was installed. In the late 1970s, Robert Size of Indian Wells, California acquired the car and had a restoration performed during which the original alloy bodywork was reinstalled. Now sporting red paint with sunburst wheels, the Cobra would be purchased by Gerald Schaubach of Minneapolis, Minnesota. 3302 would surface again after 10 years, now May of 1987, to be sold at an auction in France. 
After being displayed with a variety of European exotics in a Paris-based museum, 3302 would eventually make it back to the U.S. And in 1998, it was purchased and returned to the U.S. by its current owner and caretaker. I would like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to GAA Classic Cars Auction at the Palace in Greensboro, North Carolina for allowing us the opportunity to film of this amazing coupe. You can find more detailed information in the video description about GAA Classic Cars Auction, including a link to their website.